Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in to the Estate Plan Lady Podcast Show. And my name is Missy Von Dantzler. And today I want to talk to you about the steps of how to apply for the borrower defense application. So this came about as someone saw one of my other videos and their school is listed on there, but they wanted the steps or the procedures on how to apply. And that's strictly what this video is about. Video might be about five to seven minutes and just bear with me here and I'm going to walk you through the steps. All right, so let's move on. And here we go. So you're going to go to studentaid.gov. The next step we're going to do is once you click on that, you're going to scroll over until you get to manage loans. And when you get to the manage loan section, go ahead and just scroll on down to where we get to borrower defense to repayment. You're going to click on that. Next, it's going to take you to this screen. Now, this screen is going to tell you borrower defense loan discharge. It's going to talk to you what this is all about. And there's their little bit of information right there. Two ways to apply, folks. One way is to apply directly on their website. The other way is by downloading it. OK, if you do apply on their website, there you go right there. And then later you can manage it. The other way is you're going to download. I'm going to talk about both ways. So the first way I actually applied on their website or attempted to apply on their website. And for some reason, it only let me get past. This is a 25 page application. Uh, don't worry. It's not going to take 25 years to fill out, but it is very detailed. So keep that in mind. Uh, set aside a couple of hours because you do have to thoroughly fill this application out. Even if your school is listed, unless you're one of the people in that lawsuit, you are still you still have to apply for this. OK, so let's move on. So you've got the apply for borrower defense. And then at first, I'm just telling you what happened to me when I went to go apply and I hit the login. I actually logged in, got on. And when I was able to do this, I actually went in, tried to apply and it froze for over a week. So the other thing I did is I just went ahead and went down to download PDF. So downloaded the PDF. And so this is how I was able to get it out. So let's go ahead and talk about that. It's 25 pages. The first page is instructions. This is how you know what it looks like because it's got the little tree on there from the Department of Education. And it is in PDF format, fillable, by the way. So here's the catch. Even when I did this as a fillable application, I was only able to type in the first two pages. After that, it kind of stalled on me and it wouldn't let me do anything else. So this is what I did. I went ahead personally and I actually filled out the first the first page of the application, but it is page two starts on page two. I typed in my name, all the good information here, the school's name, the campus, the location, all these good things. And after page two right here, I printed out everything. So I printed out the whole 25 pages. Then I went with my pen and I started filling out everything. Because what happened is, and I had confirmation from a couple of other people that let me know they were also not able to file online directly. So this is the relief, the other option you can do. I just took a black pen and I just started filling out everything. Now it is the whole application from front to back is 25 pages. It's very detailed. So you have to read the questions and definitely fill this out to the best of your knowledge and, you know, definitely um, get everything going. So if you have transcripts, enrollment agreements, course catalogs, legal documents, anything that can help, send that in too along with your application. So on the end down here, since I was unable to actually um, send mine in directly through their website because it kept crashing, what I did is I filled out everything and I go down to page 25, last page. It's going to give you a nice little address right here, the U.S. Department of Education, and there's their address. And what I did is I went down to the post office and I got one of those flat rate envelopes because it was pretty thick, my application. And I sent that off with my proof and I sent that off. And I also ordered a copy for somebody to hard sign. So certified return receipt, 
signature, whatever they call it. I got all that. So that way they have proof that they're going to actually receive your information too as well. If you're able to do it online, good for you. Please comment below and let me know how you did it and I wasn't able to, but it would not accept my application online. And so I did it this way. A couple of points I want to bring out to people because I don't want to lead you guys astray. I want to make sure that um, you know these things. So I'm not going to walk you through the full application, but there are certain things that you have to know, and this really is going to make a difference. So if you go on to page three, it's going to ask you the program name or major. Pretty self-explanatory. Were you a business major, engineering, law, nursing, um, whatever it was, there you go. Underneath, what kind of degree or credential were you getting? Was it a certificate program? Was it a diploma? Was it associates? bachelor's or master's. Now, here's the key. The key is if you are seeking relief for multiple programs, please submit a separate application for each program. So this is for the person that um, actually might have went for several degrees at the same place. So let's say you went to a school and you went for their associate's degree and then you turn around and went back and you went for a bachelor's degree. For whatever reason, you would have to do two separate applications. That's one of the main things that you have to keep in mind. So remember, for each different school, it has to be a different application. For each different program or credential that you went to, also a separate application. Okay, the rest of this is self-explanatory, whether you graduated, withdrew, attending, all these things you're gonna answer on your own. It does look like you can type these things in, it allowed me to type in for a while, then it stopped, and I just had to just use my pen, and I was able to continue the application, fill out everything, and provide my evidence. And then, like I said, you would go down to page 25, and you would actually, let's get you over there, mail it to this address that is right here. And what I want you to do in about a week or two, you're going to log back into your account with studentaid.gov and it should have to where under manage my applications it should have on there the tracking of your application so even if you mailed it in you still should be under manage my application and i would wait about a week or two and then call them up and if you can't find it on here under manage my application and that's it so remember if you're able to fill out everything online do it if not, and you're like the rest of me or the rest of us, as I was going to say, a couple other people reached out to me too, told me they weren't able to do it online. They actually filled out the PDF and they mailed it in. That, that doesn't stop anything. So I hope this video helped you. And uh, as this channel is growing, I want to thank you all for tuning in and for uh, the new subscribers that are joining as this channel is growing. And I hope I can help you. If you have any questions or comments, keep your comments professional. Go ahead and list them below and we'll tackle them. So anyway, everybody, go ahead and have yourself a wonderful day. And until the next video, take care of yourself.